Since I've made such a big deal about music and film scores in previous videos, I want to start taking specific examples and giving them longer and more detailed discussions. I did not study music, and I hardly know much musical terminology. What I do know is how it affects me when watching a film. So it is mainly through this lens that I will be approaching this score and any others that I cover. In this approach, I will highlight the context of the film, the score, and what makes certain cues effective in relation to the images they accompany. Many films can be said to have been saved by their music. Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef can attribute most of its staying power to the music. It tells the story of feuding families of sponge fishers in Florida, and a bit of Romeo and Juliet-esque romance. All the drama is more or less standard. However, I consider the film rewatchable for three reasons. The interest in the setting and the idea of a film about sponge fishers. Secondly, this was just the third film shot in Cinemascope, and so the photography of the film above and under the water is quite beautiful. Thirdly, as mentioned before, the music supports all else. The most notable thing about the music was that Bernard Herrmann, always brilliant when it came to arranging which instruments he would use, employed nine harps to create unrivaled wave-like glissandos. However, Herman also uses the lower, more resonant parts of the harps to create an incredible atmosphere during the underwater scenes. Along with brass, woodwinds, and other low register instruments, the overall music gives an, at times, appropriately menacing thickness. In the first scene I'll highlight, sponge fisher Mike is lifted out of the ocean after just completing a dive. We've spent the introduction to the film establishing the underwater world, Herman's music setting the tone and the palpable atmosphere. As Mike comes out of the water and his helmet is removed, the strings come in full and it is as if we're given a sigh of relief, taking in a breath of fresh air along with the character. Bernard Herrmann cut his teeth on radio scoring with CBS and the Mercury Theater, alongside Orson Welles, who would be his ticket to Hollywood. Herrmann became adept at underscoring narration and stretches of dialogue. Another fisherman, who has just hauled in a massive catch of sponges, tells of the treacherous place known as the Twelve Mile Reef. Hey, Sinan. Where did you get it? We went to the Twelve Mile Reef. Nobody's been out the 12 mile reef. Not since it killed my brother Pete. That's where we went, right out to Pete's marker where he's still in the water. We went way down, over 20 fathoms down. Talk, talk, big talk. Pete's pants fit loose on you, you lose your feet in his shoes. And you too scared to go down. I went down, all right. If you went down, you saw the reef. What does it look like? I died down there. A coral is beautiful. A sharp, like a raisin, cuts you through to ribbons. There are caves everywhere. Your airline gets tangled up until you think you, you're never going to get out of it. Although the scene is about telling and not showing, Herman's music is chilling and helps us imagine the eerie place as it is described, like on radio. Again, Herman is working with what he has and elevating it beyond what it was. The second major highlight is the cue called the Lagoon. 
In this scene, the two romantic leads swim around underwater for about two and a half minutes. Since there is no dialogue, Herman creates a gorgeous mini-tone poem as the lovers swim around one another and encounter various sea creatures. The strings and harps twinkling and shimmering like the undulating light on screen. The last example comes toward the end of the film, when Tony, the son of Mike, goes to the Twelve Mile Reef to fish for sponges. As he goes in deeper, finally nearing a cave, the familiar underwater ambience is cut through by dark, long notes on the bases. This foreboding stays with us as Tony enters the cave and is soon attacked by a giant octopus. grotesque swelling of the brass, accompanied by rumbling drums, ramps up until Tony dispatches the monster. Herman doesn't overemphasize the action but merely scores the rise in danger and terror as the situation progresses. Nobody quite wrote music for menace and lurking like Bernard Herrmann. Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef is a movie I'd recommend seeing maybe once. However, the score is written with a wide palette of tonal colors and can be enjoyed many times over. There are too many wonderful moments to mention here. It is one of the master composer's best, in my humble opinion.